It is so good to be in the midst of God's good creation this morning. God is shining on us this morning, even as the sun begins to come up. It is so wonderful to be here in the midst of this beautiful and glorious day. It is a bit cold. Anybody cold? <laughs> it is a bit chilly, but it is at least a clear morning. And we've had colder, I think, down here on the beach, haven't you? <laughs> But it is gorgeous to be here in the midst of God's creation. You can see the waves are out there coming in gently onto the shore. I've been on the North Shore for the last three years, which is kind of like living in exile for a South Shore boy like me. <laughs> but now I look and I see... No stones. That's right. You got it. No stones. <laughs> here on God's beach. There is beauty in the midst of God's creation. It is amazing that God takes such ordinary things like this to speak to our hearts, is it not? It's incredible that God takes the sunrise and reminds us of the sun's rising. It's amazing to us that God's shore, God's ocean, and bay in this case, comes to us and reminds us again and again of God's waves of faithfulness coming to the shores of our lives. God takes the simple and the ordinary, and makes it is something amazing. From John's perspective, the resurrection was fairly quiet, at least compared to the crucifixion. There were no screaming crowds, no pounding nails. Like his birth, Jesus' resurrection seemed to happen while the world still slept. His resurrection was both under-attended and under-celebrated. No one was there to witness Jesus' coming back to life. When Mary of Magdala and the other two disciples finally arrive that morning, each of them has a different reaction. Mary grieves Jesus with her tears. The beloved disciple, perhaps John, believed, but he didn't do anything with the news. And he returns to the room where they had been staying. And Peter, the rock, as Jesus said, on which he would build his church, sees all the evidence and simply goes back into hiding as well. We don't yet have a clue what it was that Peter was thinking that morning. Christ's resurrection is a real historic event, but this means it's also subject to the same varying reactions that we all have to everything else in this world. Some will notice it and move on. Some don't know what to think, and some don't realize until somebody finally calls their name. This is how resurrection comes. For some of us, it comes miraculously. We see an incredible miracle, a triumph of life over death that is undeniable and unmistakable, something we will carry with us all the way to our grave and beyond. For others, the resurrection comes subtly. We must look past the ordinary and begin to look deep enough to understand what it is that God is doing underneath. When we look at world events today, it can be hard to figure out what it is that God is doing in the midst of it all. But underneath that is a resurrection reality that is hard to see. God has taken the ordinary and brought something extraordinary in it. Wherever, whenever, however, we come to believe in the resurrection, the resurrection means life for all of us. To those in denial, Jesus brings the truth. To those in confusion, Jesus brings clarity. To those in grief, Jesus brings hope. This morning we celebrate the resurrection, my sisters and brothers, because this is the triumph of life over death. This is Christ's final victory. And though we still taste death in this life, it is the last of the things for Christ to finally obliterate and destroy, as the Apostle Paul puts it. One day, we too will no longer taste death, but life will be here for all of us. But don't wait until the end. We still have resurrection life here and now. And though it may be cold and your fingers may feel like they all have arthritis this morning, <laughs> trust me, Christ's life is alive in you. And if you have the spirit of Christ in your heart, it testifies to this truth this morning that Christ is alive. Or as we say in the ancient church, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And we're going to finish on that note together. I'm going to say Christ is risen. You're going to say he is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.